The work doesn't stop after this food bank closes. So we are uh, unloading crackers and chips for clients that just came in from Second Harvest. As volunteers, many of them clients themselves, prepare for another day of long lineups. It's very hard to find a job, but without job, uh, food bank is very good uh, option for needy peoples. They're seeing triple the number of people compared with three years ago. Are you seeing a lot of new faces? A lot of new faces, yes. Of all, all ethnicities, everything, yes. Our lineups you will see outside when we open, it's two blocks down sometimes, you know. The problem is nationwide. Food rescue charity Second Harvest collected data from 1,300 organizations. It found demand for food banks will grow by 60 percent this year. That's on top of a 134 percent increase last year. A lot of people that are accessing food supports have jobs. These are not these are families that just can't make it and they, they could be two parent families and they have jobs. A number of factors are playing into this increase in need. The end of COVID supports, food inflation and the fact wages can't keep up all play a role. There are so many pressures on families right now and individuals on how do you best spend your money. And the truth is food is really your only negotiating product. Researchers say food banks offer short-term emergency help, not a long-term fix. The more effective um, solution would be a, a, a guaranteed livable basic income that puts an income floor under everybody, something that's tied to cost of living in different areas, which we have the data, we can do that. A costly solution perhaps, but one advocate say would ease the burden on grassroots organizations. Lisa Shing, CBC News, Toronto.